say that. I don't know where he pulled that out of, but it, it, it's just not part of our uh, operations, okay? Right, so the fire department doesn't have the training to pull a building, to demo a building like right. that. We're not trained to do that. We've never done that in my 32 years. I know of no evolution whatsoever that does that. Mm -hmm. And then talk to me a little bit, obviously, as a professional in the fire department for 30 plus years, they're saying that, uh, blaming it on office fires, just a few office fires. Well, if it wasn't so serious a situation, that would be completely laughable. That is ridiculous. First of all, our guys were up there. They were calling for additional hand lines to mop up the isolated pockets of fire. And let me just explain one thing. Never in the history of the world, never in the history of high-rise skyscrapers has ever a uh, skyscraper ever come down because of fire. And I'm talking massive fire, and you know the reason why? Because fire does not burn by itself hot enough to compromise and melt steel. What we had in the World Trade Center, and I saw myself, was molten lava-like pockets of molten steel. All right, I spent the night on the pile searching for bodies, and I saw that with my own eyes. So who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe a bunch of government bureaucrats or my fellow brothers, which I lost 343 guys that day. And I lost Tommy O'Hagan, Bruce Van Hines, and Kenny Kumpel. And I can never forget that. I think of that before I go to bed. I think about it the first thing in the morning when I wake up. And it's in honor of them and their family that I will continue to do everything I can to make the rest of the world wake up to the fact that this was a false flag operation. Right. And now, as you're, as you're out there with, with professionals who understand what it is that they're seeing, what were you all saying to each other when you're looking at this molten lava? Well, we were overcome with grief, first of all. We lost 343 guys. We, didn't, we weren't talking about that. If you, if you look at the numerous video, videos, you'll see the guys bent over in incredible grief. One of the things that we have in the fire department is an incredible brotherhood. We do what we do, an aggressive interior attack, because we believe in each other. We know that our guys will pull us out if we get into trouble. And if we lose somebody, it's, it's, it's we're, we're family. We're, we're very close. We know each other's families. We know each other's children. And one of the things that I've been privy to is, is uh, you know, I'm proud of is that I, see, the New York City Fire Department is a calling. It brings out the best in guys, you know, I mean, uh, in men who put their lives on the line to save other people's lives. New York City Fire Department is probably the least integrated of all the services, right? When I first came into the firehouse, it was all heavy brogues and stuff. But those same guys, I've seen them bent over giving mouth to mouth to little black children that they've just pulled out of a building. And typically when you die or when you, you cease to, to, to start uh, uh, to breathe, you throw up and they, they gave them mouth to mouth. You know, I've seen incredible acts of heroes. I love my fellow firefighters. We love each other. And I'm dedicated to exposing this false flag that took their lives. What do your what do your comrades say to you? What do you what do people say to you? Because we've we've tried to talk to some people, and of course, you know they have to worry about their pension and things like that. They cannot comment, and I'm retired. But while I was on, I was approached by the news, and I I deferred from commenting for two reasons. First of all, I I was at uh, 1993, the first bombing. And I saw that I stood shoulder to shoulder with the FBI while they foraged for little paint chips. And with their forensic science, they can take that paint chip and tell you the make and model of a vehicle that it belonged to. All right. And and I that was a bombing. This was a bombing. Uh, what did you think about them taking all of the debris away so quickly? That was a crime in and of itself, because the classical thing that any investigator is taught is protect the crime scene. And NIST and the 9-11 Commission lied to the public. 
I mean, you cannot be that stupid. You cannot be that stupid. In law, as a former police officer, every crime or offense has a degree of mental culpability. Either you knowingly, intentionally, recklessly, or negligently committed the act. And the mere fact that there were obviously, uh, uh, the definition of a conspiracy is when two or more people acting in concert knowingly commit an offense or a, or, or a crime, all right, uh, a, a misdemeanor or a felony, an offense. That is the definition of a conspiracy. Was this a conspiracy? Absolutely. Yes, it was. And those people need to go to jail for treason. Is there anything else that you want to say to anyone out there, anyone who might be wanting to come forward but they're scared? I want to thank you because you're all we have, InfoWars, right, and independent press to try to get the word out to the public because the public is mesmerized by the mainstream media. And let me give you my opinion of the mainstream media. The mainstream media is uh, their mission is, is to act as the most effective weapon of mass deception and public manipulation the world has ever seen. And if you don't think that's so, ask anyone any taboo question that the mainstream media frowns upon with its ho uh, army of trusted celebrity prostitutes. All right? We've seen and, and, and you will see a sadly predictable knee-jerk reactionary response from the public because that's what they've been trained to believe and trust in. Thank you so much. Okay. My pleasure. Well, Liam McAdoo reporting from Times Square, and there you have it. The people are ready for truth. It does not matter how many of these anniversaries go by. The truth will reveal itself in due time. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. If we're in a free country, why are we afraid to just talk about an event that was the most traumatic event in our history? I originally believed the official story, I aggressively defended it. When I first started cracking open that little window that there could be possibly more to this story, I went through every emotion, just like probably a lot of you here who didn't originally believe it or consider it are going through. And I didn't want to believe it, I came up with every excuse not to believe it. Any building that succumbs to fire, that collapses, starts usually with large gradual deformations and the building will begin to fall over, not straight down through the path of what was the greatest resistance. These buildings exploded. We have witnesses that hear sounds of explosions. We started walking down the stairs, we made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel. Like molten thing. steel running down the channel rails. Like you're in a foundry. Uh -huh. yeah. Like lava. Like, 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 like lava. Volcano. This is all direct evidence of explosive controlled demolition. Well, that was a trailer for a new movie premiering September 11th, 2015. Firefighters, architects, and engineers expose 9-11 myths. Now, please welcome San Francisco Bay Area architect Richard Gage, AIA. He is a member of the American Institute of Architects, and he is the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. So, Richard, welcome back to the show. It's great to have you on. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about World Trade Center 7, and obviously it's, it's so important to the whole 9-11 story. Now, the official story, it was just normal office fires that took this building down. Obviously, there's no precedent uh, before or after for something like this happening. Um, talk to me a little bit about maybe the behavior of the building and why it seems like that would be important to the 9-11 Commission to look into World Trade Center 7, yet they didn't. Exactly. The 2,000 architects and engineers that I represent are extremely disturbed because Building 7, the third skyscraper to collapse on 9-11,
looks exactly like a controlled demolition, behaves like a controlled demolition, uh, and yet NIST claims eight years later in their official report that this building was brought down by normal office fires. Nobody's buying that. There's witnesses that hear explosions before the building comes down. In fact, the BBC even announced the collapse of this building 20 minutes before it ever happened. So this is absolutely extraordinary. We know we've been not told the truth by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, and this is the red flag. Uh, this is the smoking gun of 9-11 that's caused so many architects and engineers to then turn their eye and look at the evidence for the explosive demolition of the Twin Towers, which we find abundantly. Right. And, and just from an eyewitness watching it, it came down in the exact same fashion as the Twin Towers, which, I mean, even that was just really bizarre to, to see a building topple from, you know, pancake from the top down like that. And then World Trade Center 7 falls in the exact same way. So, you know, you've spoken about this a lot. There's plenty of stuff online if people really want to get into it. Um, but you know, what, what's some new evidence, some new things that you're learning? Uh, obviously, I know you're working with a lot of firefighters now as well, first responders. So what are, what are some new things that you're, some breakthroughs you kind of working with? Indeed, Eric Lawyer, the founder of Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, uh, now numbering 200 firefighters calling for a new investigation. Uh, he cites in this new film, which we're premiering here in New York um, uh, tomorrow night, uh, he cites uh, the, 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 the destruction of evidence, the illegal destruction of evidence in a crime scene. He cites the spoilation of evidence, uh, which are guidelines uh, from the National Fire Protection Association that he goes through one by one, where you're supposed to look for and test for explosives and incendiaries when you have the hallmarks of them. And we do uh, everywhere. There's uh, hundreds of witnesses of explosions, but not one of them ap appear in official reports. So this is what caught Eric's attention too, because they say if you have high temperatures like that fire can't even produce, like twice those temperatures, molten steel, molten iron, which is what we have abundantly of, documented by first responders, structural engineers, et cetera, in the, in the piles under the World Trade Center towers, uh, this is all uh, a re requires th them, NIST, to look for evidence of explosives. They say they um, didn't find any. Later they acknowledge in writing, that they never looked for it. So we'll be talking about the, what was found by an international team of scientists led by Niels Harrett uh, with small red-gray chips of very high-tech nanothermite in all the dust samples that they independently collected. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought that that was really bizarre, you know, many, many years ago when I heard that they were hauling everything away so quickly and shipping it off to China and that that was supposed to be completely normal and they were doing it because it was just such a, sore site and they wanted everyone to move on and to, to start the healing process. And yet here we have one of the most tragic thing that's ever happened in, here in America and they're hauling away anything to see what could have possibly happened that day. Now I know that you are, uh, you've erected a billboard there right outside uh, the New York Times basically demanding some answers. Um, they were part of the establishment media that was complicit in obeying George W. to not tolerate any, you know, conspiracy theories when really that's what you do as an investigative journalist. You look at the facts and you say, this isn't all adding up. So, you know, years later now, we can talk to the establishment media and, you know, what, what are you kind of charging them with? Well, we're charging them with the complete censorship of the story of the crime of the century. It is not being played uh, on mainstream media whatsoever. Thank God for Infowars and other uh, excellent outlets who are putting forth the evidence uh, that uh, David Sanger, chief Washington correspondent of the New York Times, claims is not there. That's why this 30-foot-tall billboard is put right in front of their office. And we're going to be out there with a press conference uh, in front of his office uh, laying all this evidence out and demanding that the New York Times take, take accountability and, and, uh, and cover this story. After all, 9-11 uh, spawned two major wars in which over a million people have perished, uh, which is why, by the way, we're reading all, all of the names of those, of those folks, not we, but an independently hosted uh, candlelight vigil, which is very important to acknowledge everything that's happened since 9-11 uh, right. uh, here in New York, the, the people that have, have laid down their lives. Um, we also, uh, 
we also are demanding uh, an investigation of the investigators themselves. Uh, NIST, uh, not just the media, 